The point is, is that the old guard is absolutely human exterminus, pure evil. But there is a total rebellion across Hollywood that I keep telling you about that is indicative of what's about to happen when Sumner Redstone and others die. That almost everyone in Hollywood, and I mean lawyers, producers, I mean even people that are 55, 60 years old, you'd think they'd be in control. No, they're under the control of 85, 95-year-old men, and they absolutely hate it. And it is cult level on fire. I mean that in a good way, like, you know, the fans of cult this, cult that, like cult film, cult cinema, like Road Warrior is a cult classic. Liberty is on fire in Hollywood. I know almost no one in Hollywood, I know a lot of people, who isn't a closet anti-New World Order conspiracy theorist. And that just means you question the official narrative of the establishment. Rob Lowe has come out and said, quote, I want the government out of almost everything, close quote. And says he's sick of the entire rotten system and it's totally corrupt and going down. You see what I'm talking about? Bruce Willis has said the same thing in Vanity Fair. I could go on for hours and my point is, people say, well, why do we care about Hollywood? It's been the cultural dominant system to make people comply and say, I'm anti-gun, I'm anti-family, I'm a liberal. That's not liberal, that's authoritarian. That whole system is coming down. And don't think the power structure doesn't know it. There's probably six or seven guys that run Hollywood up at the top of the big production companies. And when anybody puts out any type of message of liberty, they call them up and threaten them and threaten to blackball them. Happened to Mark Cuban. I witnessed it. Later came out in the New York Times. And the reason I get back to this Hollywood thing is the whole house of cards is coming down. That's why the system wants to bring in authoritarianism. 90% of warfare is psychological. Hollywood is the tip of the spear for the New World Order. And if they lose their own people, it's over. That's why they want to just skip all that, bring in authoritarianism now, where they can actually disappear you or arrest you. Because threatening everyone doesn't work anymore. Because what happens when everybody starts speaking out? What happens when no one's intimidated anymore? You can't stop everybody unless you already had a total tyranny in. So we're in a race to the finish line with the tyrants. I mean, I'll give you an example. Willie Nelson, about eight years ago, came to one of my film premieres for Endgame and showed up and came around the counter and I was signing DVDs afterwards and, you know, hey, uh, give me your number. I'm going to call you. I really like what you do. I listen to your show almost every day. And I'm like, well, thank you, Willie. I heard you were here and didn't believe it. Uh, and then he left. So I got to know Willie Nelson, started playing chess with him, hanging out with him, you know, here and there, eating dinner here and there. And people started death threatening him. We're going to kill you if you don't say you're, you know, he started saying he was pro-gun, that 9-11 was an inside job, that uh, eugenics was the threat. And he was about 72 years old then. He's 80. He wasn't, he was still super sharp. He's still somewhat sharp, but not at 80. And not as sharp as he used to be. The point is, I mean, who would be? The point is, is that, I mean, I watched that where they literally death threatened him. And then he had Ventura and I to speak at some deal. And... They were threatening to blow the place up. Nobody ever even knew about this. I didn't talk about it. And he said, okay, I, you guys can still speak. Ventura said, we don't care. Go have a good time, Willie. We're here to watch the show as if Ventura cares about speaking to 4,000, 5,000 people, as if I care. I can go flip a switch and talk to 3 million every day. But the issue is, is that's the type of stuff that goes on. The establishment is there trying to keep everybody on the reservation. And there is a major pushback. Where do you think the biggest pushback is going to be? Inside Hollywood. People are sick of it. The Republican Tea Party is sick of the Republican leadership trying to prop up Obamacare and trying to prop up open borders and trying to prop up gun control. It's an establishment working together to suppress real change. And we ever shatter that with the incredible allure, the sexiness of freedom, true freedom, true Americana, it's over. People are buying what we're selling, freedom. People are not buying what the establishment is selling. They are a bunch of gangster bullies intimidating everyone. And then your local talk show hosts and local reporters, they all comply with whatever the party line is because the word's out. You do what the establishment says. You repeat what the national talk show host says, and you'll go far in life.
No, you'll go nowhere. So there's a total revolution in understanding happening right now. And the battle is joined. We're going to come right back with big breaking news on Obamacare. Break down the inside scoop on the uh, increase in suicides. So we'll have a lot of time to take calls today. First off, Jeb Bush, illegal immigration, an act of love. Yes, they broke the law, but it's not a felony. And they did it to get back with their family. Yeah, so we let another 30 million in, and then all their families have to come in. And then just so happens, Jeb, they vote Democrat about 90% of the time, which you love because the Republicans um, back during Gary, Barry Goldwater's uh, era weren't as bad as they are now. And so the Bushes basically with the neocons took over the Republican Party. They are the Democrats. They are the Democrats' right wing. And they share power with the Clintons, who are protégés of CIA officer George Herbert Walker Bush. And you know that's all come out. It's all completely staged, all a giant joke to them. And I told you, you'd see Boehner and the Republicans try to prop up Obamacare and keep the law in place with a couple of cosmetic changes that actually don't change anything. On the most criminal, out-of-control law in history. It, it is so fraudulent, so ridiculous, so insane. But here is Jeb Bush. Yes, they broke the law, but it's not a felony. It's an act of love. It's an act of love, ladies and gentlemen. Can I go to Mexico and have my baby paid for when it's born and then say, my family, I need my family from El Norte to come down here with me. Come on. You would be laughed at and beaten up in the parking lot. Probably thrown in jail. Mexico has some of the most draconian anti-immigration laws in the world. Look it up. Six months to a year, hard labor, if they catch you in the country illegally. Work camps for the Guatemalans. Uh, but, but Americans, oh, oh, Jeb Bush, just like he was for NAFTA and GATT, and just like they were for the police state and the drug war, and Obamacare, Jeb Bush, Republican leadership helped write Obamacare, for the big insurance companies, openly owned by people like Warren Buffett, who's such a nice old man. He, he's a nice old man with his big banks laundering all that money on record. He's just a friendly old man. Just a friendly old man. Got some candy in that van. Kids, get in. Everybody knows all old men wearing suits and ties are nice. I mean, this is so ridiculous to hear this out of him. And now GOP seeks coverage choices in health law they hate. That's how AP wrote it. AP should have GOP works with Obama behind the scenes to stop revolution against Obamacare and its repeal. Or headline, GOP seeks to cover Obama and the Democratic Party from total political annihilation and seek to protect the party who passed the bill Republicans wrote. That should be the headline. You know, with Ezekiel Emanuel and the eugenicists, the death panel, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation sponsoring it, along with Mitt Romney in Massachusetts, where the pilot state, what, 15 years ago, and they passed the core of what became law. I mean, it wasn't as bad as what the Democrats added on to it, but it was really bad. Basically, insurance companies making you buy their product where they can charge whatever they want and lower the quality of the product and have the government set the standards of what type of tests and surgeries you can get. What do you think is going to happen? Prices are going to go up and you're going to get less. What would you do if you were an offshore mega corporation that owns insurance companies? Well, every time they can, they finance dictators in third world countries. See, the globalists finance pure evil. You are nothing but dead meat to them. And when you act so naive and ignorant, folks, they say that's a self-fulfilling prophecy that you deserve to be run over by the system. That, that you deserve to be crushed by the establishment. And so they make it a partisan issue. Oh, look, the Republicans don't want you to have this. You know, please don't throw me in the Briar Patch. Will you guys print me the story of Briar Rabbit, just a boil down of it? I think I need to read that on air to people. Briar Rabbit wants to be thrown in the Briar Patch. That's where he's safe. He goes, whatever you do, don't throw me in the Briar Patch. Here's the Republicans. Oh, my gosh. Whatever you do, don't pass Obamacare. We're so upset by it. Oh, it's so horrible. 
Democrats, well, we're going to get it, and nothing you're going to do is going to stop us. Racist. Al Sharpton says, you're racist. If you don't, support Obamacare. <laughs>